Welcome back to the 2023 PDGA Champions Cup, our first pro major of the 2023 disc golf season. I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Nathan Queen. What an exciting start it's been. The first couple rounds we've seen lots of birdies, a little bit of struggles, but just a beautiful property out here at Wildwood Park on the WR Jackson course. Yeah, and it's been pretty doggone shreddable. We've seen some scores approaching double digits over the first two rounds, and as we get into round three on the front nine, we've got a pretty tight pack here between Eagle McMahon, Mason Ford, Simon Lazat, and Anthony Barella. Yeah, just two strokes separating the chase card here. And as you see, they've got a little bit of ways up to the leader in Isaac Robinson, uh, but still plenty of room to make moves onto the lead card for the final day. Yeah, and you can kind of double the scores thus far and see about where they project. Yeah, and Eagle McMahon, same bag as the first two rounds. He's here for a third time, putting with the Rainmakers, throwing lots of understable stuff, a lot of that essence that you'll see. Mason Ford, sponsored by Mint Discs, going to putt with the Profit, and we saw him in round two approaching with the Bullet and uh, throwing quite a few Mustang for his mid-ranges. And into Simon Lazat's bag, also been on our card, uh, putting with the Anode, going to see a lot of proxy upshots, maybe a little bit of the Hex, and uh, some maybe that Defy again. Anthony Barella, new to our card for this tournament, putting with the CT Jawbreaker Focus, and uh, we know Anthony has a ton of power, and we're going to use the Venom to go particularly far, and then approach with zones or buzzes. Yeah, and here into hole one, 660 foot par four. Again, you've got two options. This side generally is going to push you a little bit farther. Uh, you can go for a flex line to get more distance from the left side, uh, but can get caught up that way. Eagle been taking the left side with a mid-range the first two rounds. And Nathan, a little bit windier today. So yeah. that may impact a couple decisions here for the uh, you know particularly fine touchy angles. It's very interesting playing a wooded course like this with the wind. It's definitely a different reaction than you see out in the open when it, whenever the wind picks up. Uh, a little less Next up. easy to figure Bowl, out. Texas. Mason Ford. McMahon shot a little too driven and turned over. Gets bogged down in the first half of the fairway. Ford going to reach for a fairway driver, also taking that left side line. And much like Eagle drifts over too early, we'll have a much easier opportunity, potentially even a birdie screen. As far as I'm aware, both of those shots were pretty inside. I don't think there's a line. They're trying to cut through those trees in the middle. I believe both of them missed by a good 15, 10, 15 feet. And we saw Simon in round one. Welcome back to this card after a very hot round two. He kind of squirrels through that left side to an ideal location, maybe 250 Mesa, away. Arizona, Anthony Barrera. Yeah, Simon really used the left side of that left gap, which is where I was expecting the other players to try to throw also. be a power player good controlled Anheuser flex touch oh, off the tree yeah nice touch off of that tree could have been fading out a bit early into the woods but that's going to keep him in the fairway Mason Ford from somewhere in the neighborhood of 380 gonna leak early into the middle cluster and that's going to force a layup for his four A 
What are you thinking here, Nathan? Yeah, he's probably going to try to go big high flex shot. Actually, that looked to be a roller, I think. Either way, he is still about 300 feet away there in the middle of the fairway. Early on, our card leader having to do some work to scramble. Pushes a flat to hyzer mid-range up the right side. A good skip into circle one. A nice recovery shot there to get himself at a chance for par. If you don't get around that corner off of the tee shot, it makes it pretty difficult to get this birdie. Uh, the second shot can get longer very quick once you don't get around that corner, just with the uphill of the hole. Yeah, I feel like the more I play it, the less certain I'm sure of what the actual shape of the hole is. Like, it turns left, but... Where does it start doing that? How does this? How does that dog leg interact with the left and right side of the fairway? Barella, this is easy pickings for him. He just gets to throw a flat Luna up the right side gap to about 25 long. Mason just pitching up. Going to try to get his par there. Hard to get aggressive on those long shots like that. Lazat, a good glide in. You can hear a little bit of that wind in the microphone. We are on the edge of the lake. Some of these, uh, some of these holes have quite a bit of protection, but others may be exposed or have exactly the right direction of tunnel coming to them. Eagle, uh, Easy par cleanup. And those tunnels are kind of what I was referring to uh, with not quite as easy to figure out. The wind isn't necessarily going to be going the same direction everywhere as it can get traveling in whatever tunnel is created with these trees. Mm -hmm. And a frustrating miss for Barella. He's usually very direct to the basket. That seemed kind of uh, floaty, tentative. Nice cleanup there for Mason. Yeah, I'm sure that's one that Anthony will look back on later on in the round or maybe once the round is over and want that one back for sure. Hole two, a par three at 390 feet. Kind of a right to left swooping shot. I imagine we'll see uh, fairways, possibly mid ranges thrown on a hyzer flip to stand up line. And Nathan, this is definitely a fairway that gets quite a bit of ground play. You want to land short of the basket, not at it. Right, and you have to carry just far enough to get over that ditch. Or you've landed too short and won't get that ground play. Simon's done exactly what you want to do, and he's done it masterfully. He is in the bullseye. Good tracking here from Catch Cam Dave. See that visor angle? Perfect distance control and about 15 feet left. Eagle. A little more stand up, a little more hyzer angle, but it is flat as it hits the ground and runs to the backside of the circle. So much speed. Yeah, he, Eagle has so much power that 390 is... Uh, between discs. He has to throw a fairway slow. And slow for him, if you saw, was 69 miles an hour up there as Mason got that one off at 60 miles an hour, still up there inside the circle. And I don't like this from Barella. This is leaking left early. It likely will still be putting, but a pretty severe misfire on one of the more open fairways on the course. Just never had enough air underneath that one. Started dropping right out of the hand.
kind of an interesting reaction. That looked like it was going to fall into the cage and instead flops out. Yeah, you don't see him hit like that too often. Look <laughs> like it kind of bounced out of the inside of the back of it. Eagle, a good birdie. Yeah, 54% of the field did take the birdie on this hole today. Been in the top two easiest holes, I believe, all three rounds. Second easiest today. 2.51. Tell you what, no out of bounds to speak of, but I, it feels like maybe eight years ago, 390 was the very edge of range of what the field wanted to throw for a par three. Yeah, I believe you're right. <laughs> uh, eight years ago, you would not have had 57 bir birdies on that hole. Uh, brings us into hole three, 726 foot par four. We want to get up around this corner so you can then have another right to left moving shot, most likely a righty backhand. You've got some aggressive plays off of this tee. You can go big, high, and Heiser shot around this corner trying to get big distance to get for a straight shot. I imagine we're going to see at least three of those with the power players on this card. And Simon going to flex out early. Uh, hard to say what he's going to have there. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to take a, a little off the fairway route up and over. McMahon, look at the wind just smash that down, Nathan. Wow. He put that way up in the air, and immediately it seemed like it lost ha half of its height. <laughs> Ford going to be more conservative. Uh, the idea here is to throw the forehand about 350 feet. There's a stump on the ground in the middle of the gap. Anything within about 15, 20 feet of that puts you in position about 400 feet away for a routine heisen. And that's in a pretty good spot there. You could see the wind holding his out left as well. So it seems like they're dealing with a bit of a light to right to left wind here. And Barella, a little higher, a little more inside. This isn't the aggressive backhand I guess I expected to see, but uh, still very efficient. Hey, Mason probably in that 375, 380 range, and that is not what you want to see there. That looked to be on a pretty good line, but catches one of those trees, and he's going to be pretty short right. Simon taking kind of the road less traveled. This is part of the fairway, but a much narrower route. You can see that this... This fairway was kind of cut out of a mature pine forest that's got some second growth sweet gums and oaks and some other stuff in it. And uh, I think give it a few more years and the off fairway is going to be extremely dense. Yeah, likely so. And you see AB, he was in pretty much the ideal position there. It gets up to right around circle's edge. Eagle looks to have this tree right in front of him to deal with a little bit. I think it's very interesting to see how much Eagle is relying on those understable flip-ups. Like, he's throwing pretty steep hyzers on a lot of shots this weekend. Effective with that one to the backside of the circle. Uh, truthfully, if we saw a heat map of where putts are being made from, I don't think many of them are backside of the circle. No. At least not for birdie. And Ford... Difficulty getting out again. He will have to lay up and, and kind of just be looking for bogey at best now. Yeah, and unfortunate for him that he didn't get one of those first two holes either. They are playing kind of easier as far as the course goes. Responsibly done from about 100. That'll leave a little bullseye tap in. And Barella seeking his first birdie of the round. And that's that's a tough start for Anthony. Um, kind of 
just maybe lost focus on the first putt and then a couple circle twos right after that where you have more pressure in your head because you missed that first putt. Yeah, and that kind of just keeps stacking up. The holes don't get easier until maybe hole seven or eight on this course. What's up, guys? Eagle here. Thank you for watching Gatekeeper Media, and I just want to send you over to my socials. Go check out my YouTube, uh, Eagles Vlogs. Go check out um, me on uh, Instagram, Eagle underscore WMCM. Dismania, we got some cool stuff coming out. Sweets Kendamas, got some grip bags left. And I just want to thank all of you for the amazing support. Keep on dreaming. The players that I've spoke to, they love the durability of it, the grip, the feel of it alone is head and shoulders above the rest of the plastic. Not just in our lineup, but across the board in my opinion. It's kind of unique actually. I can definitely feel first, my first instinct is like, wow, that's something like I've never felt before. Something with the Supreme plastic and the next feel technology is it's different. This, this isn't gonna be as hard, it's gonna feel good and you're gonna love throwing it. Hole four, another par three at 327 feet. We've got three straight par threes coming up and uh, getting all of them is a significant challenge. This moves right to left and we're either going to see mid range, uh, trying to get air shots or uh, some skip shots with fairway drivers to get that leftward finish. Eagle, this has swung too far to the right, and that is Scramble Town. Yeah, lucky to get that tiny little roll back out to at least the left side of the fairway where he may have a chance to get a full arm swing. Lazat pushes his shot a little long, doesn't quite get the left flare that you're hoping, uh, but inside circle two with what appears to be a fairly open look. Barella, this is thrown very well. I like it a lot if it can get a finish. It never does quite get that finish. Just pushes a little bit straight, but he is going to be right around circle's edge yet again. I believe this is a grackle from Mason Ford. He threw it too soft and left yesterday. This time, a good correction gets it to the backside and a little check skip into the circle. And the eagle's gonna have to make it around that dark pine you can see before he starts moving left, making it a pretty steep angle here. Oh yeah, able to use a very overstable disc on that hyzer and get the proper ground play. You can check previous coverage for, I believe, a very similar scramble on this same hole. And Simon measures up the left, right, not quite the distance and height. And Barella makes good. There's the first one. That could uh, certainly lead to a stack of them. He's been driving well enough to be ha to have an opportunity on all four holes so far. So. And Mason Ford back to even on the round. That's kind of been the wrap on Anthony Barella for quite a while. Like he kind of lives and dies by his putting, but it's going to throw the disc as well as anybody, right? Here we are into the second of those three par threes you were talking about. Hole five, 432 foot. Uh, the tightest gap of those three also. Um, again, you're going to want to throw something on a hyzer that slowly stands up and drifts to the right. Uh, some players may go for more of a flex shot. It makes the gap tighter. And wow. A lot of action on that disc. Can That's all the way back in the fairway again. Nathan, when you were eight, did you have a bowling party for your birthday? And if you did, did you have the bumpers on? Hmm. Probably. I, I could definitely see myself having a bowling party. 
I think I think Anthony still has the bumpers on uh, if he's going to funnel back to the fairway after those kicks. Ford nearly throws the, the pure shot down the middle, but uh, takes a tap about halfway down to the left side. We'll be scrambling for par. Eagle, and this is gorgeous. He's just splitting the fairway in two. Done it again. Is this just a replay of the first two rounds? Yeah. Runs it up onto the shelf inside circle one. That's the same spot. Just about. And Lazat. Just a little bit to the right. And with that much height on it, could have gotten a lot off to the left side. And he is going to end up going to a forehand roller now. Not what you want to see on hole five. Yeah, look at this. He's going to have to land it pointing well away from the basket. There's so many different little undulations here that could get him caught up. But he... Ex executes it nicely. He's up there inside circle one. Mason with a slow zone play, just looking for the Anheuser release, slow glide out. He likes his line up there. He swung his whole arm and then just flicked his wrist for the shot. <laughs> Very nice touch. And Barella, after funneling back to the fairway, able to jump but his approach. And from a knee dead center for Eagle McMahon. Yeah, that will put him to three down through the first five holes. That's a great start. Yeah, if you're going to make a push on the second moving day, it needs to be sustained throughout the entire round. Three through five is a is quite a way to do that. Barella for his comeback. Oh boy. And this hole actually played as the second hardest on the course today. Uh, a lot more bogeys came into play. Maybe maybe some of that wind creeping through. Yeah, playing into a headwind means that you're likely not going to get a fairway all all the way there on that kind of controlled hyzer flip shape. So maybe people having to disc up or uh, just missing the angle. Hole six, this is a par three playing uphill at about 360 feet or so. There are two gaps, one to the right, one to the left. The left gap is tighter, but a little more direct. The right side, we're likely to see four uh, flip-ups from a pretty severe hyzer. Eagle's done that pretty well in the first couple rounds. This one looks great. Plugging out to the right side, and actually scooting long. I feel like that's new to this year. I don't... I'm not sure we've seen many people get long in the pin before. Yeah, I agree. I think there was some, some extra clearing that was done just to take some branches that were in the line out of play. And Mason keeping it a little bit too low there. He's going to end up outside circle two. Simon, this is too far right. It needs some stability on the end. And he gets it into circle one. <laughs> That'll work. And Barella not really playing with that under stability. And that's what happens. You come up a little short and run to the left side. Yeah, kind of threw that on the same angle as the other guys, but like you said, more stable of a disc. Mason Ford with a pretty good run there. Just lost a little bit of air right at the end. This would be a good putt for, for AB to kind of settle in on. Make a good tester. And he's able to do that. And if he's going to make a push, he's going to have to give himself 
easier opportunities. Everything so far has been at, you know, circle's edge or 25 feet. Uh, and that just gets to be stressful throughout the round. Definitely so. And you can see if you are at that circle's edge, 28 feet in the woods like this, you can end up with a strange putt like Eagle had inside the circle. Yeah, pretty neat that uh, there aren't any elevated baskets on the Jackson course. All of the greens are, are very fair, but the closer you get to circle's edge, the more obstructed they do become. Hey guys, my name is Mason Ford. I'm sponsored by Mint Discs, Lucky Ace Discs, and Pound Disc Golf. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is MasonFord72844. Um, if you want to support my tour, you can go to mintdiscs.com to pick up my signature bullet. Kyle Klein stepping up for the birdie on 18. You're open champion, Gannon Burr. Another record-setting weekend on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Back-to-back -back weeks, winner coming from the chase card. Pretty special stuff. Gannon Burr, Kyle Klein, two young superstars on tour. Showing you how to get it done. foot par four going downhill off of the tee shot all the way around the corner to the left and it dives down some more as you want to get your second shot around this tree ideally and then hyzer back into this pin watch out for this last tree right here you can hit that yeah plenty of trees out here for everybody i may have been a little salty with that with that <laughs> calling out that last tree there. you found some popular ones huh Lazat, this is pulled way too far right, and looks like he's not going to make it out of the first gap. Yeah, gonna could be a difficult scramble to get a par from all the way back there. Barella, I imagine just having to go fairway driver to prevent himself pushing the back wall. You see the late stability here, and this is jumping left into an ideal spot, about 300, 320 feet away. McMahon kind of following that, but a little more inside. And again, with so much more speed, he's jumped up there on that left side, kind of past the gap that the drone flew. So he's going to be looking to see what he can find over on the left. He may be able to take that true fairway, or he might just have to kind of finagle his way through about 300 feet of woods. Ford, this is following Barella's very nicely. And kind of the Goldilocks between Eagle and Anthony. Simon having to throw a standstill from the right side of the fairway. That's and that's a nice drop back down, it looked like. Yeah, you could hear him say, that's trouble, but not punished too, too badly. Yeah, still pretty far back. Lots of angles to make work right here. That first tree touch was going to make it work very nicely. Does cat some branches, but it looks like he may have a long circle too look. Having kind of burned his first shot, that's a decent outcome. Ford sneaks inside. And we'll be on the high side of the basket looking at it for three. There is one kind of sideways growing tree up there that has some... Fingers on it? Yeah, it has yeah. some <laughs> fingers and some little leaves. Uh, we'll see if that comes into play for him at all. Anthony Barella going to play high hyzer. Follows up there, but inside the circle. Looks like Eagle is still going to try to go to that right side. Look how steep of a hyzer he threw that on. And 
What a shot. Yeah, the challenge is to get that all the way back. He nearly gets it up the hill uh, and will be inside circle one putting. Yeah, that doesn't quite... It doesn't quite make sense to me. <laughs> Simon not quite able to connect on the par. And Mason definitely was dealing with that tree a bit. Mm -hmm. Had to straddle out to the right. And fires it in there. Way to commit. That was going to be 120 past. <laughs> Anthony did get that closer look you were talking about. He was a little closer than he has been, uh, but ends up just a bit low. If you watch that back, look how Eagle keeps his feet very close together. It keeps, keeps his weight shift kind of normal on that uphill stance. It's a good adjustment. And Simon, unfortunately, going to have to tap in a bogey five hole eight another par four with an initial downhill tee shot and then a pretty severe right dog leg we're either going to see backhand turnovers with putters or mids or forehands that are just kind of more of a positional play Fairway has uh, a right side and a left side, leading to a basket that's sort of perched on a downslope. I think so much of this hole in particular is make your second shot manageable, but you can't really predict where you're going to go, what kind of ground play, what kind of reaction you'll get as you get down the hill. Right, you have uh, the ground is very different in every spot where you want to land at. You could catch a root, you could catch a little bit of mud, you could catch some of the mulch that they put down to counteract the mud. You could get this cut roll that Mason got because it isn't flat down there either. Yeah, he he was in the fairway and now he's not. Um, but I think ultimately that that was his fault. He didn't give the the putter the height to glide out to flat. Barella with the forehand would be about 325. Yeah, ideally, if you can do it, that's what you would like to do on this one is throw that forehand or left to right moving shot that doesn't have the opportunity to overturn itself. In that case, Simon went with a little more overstable, trying to get the glide back to flat, but does tag a fairway tree. This is just a very good committed gap hit, gap hit from Mason Ford. Yeah, and used a very understable disc to do it. Stood up just a bit too much, but that's how that's what you have to do to to commit to those gap shots. A lot of the time, is throw that understable disc mm -hmm. so you can hit the gap vertically. Eagle, I believe this is an essence. Again, a. Heiser release, trying to get it to glide up. And from those less than ideal scenarios, everyone being pretty responsible, just ensuring they can get a four. This is a zone from Anthony. And he is right side looking down at the basket. And That's quite a theme we have. What a what a rip for a zone. Yeah, zones don't glide. He just threw that 300 plus. <laughs> <laughs> Great recovery by Simon Lazat, taking that left side narrower. Yeah, didn't move very far on his second shot. Didn't like it, so he said, let me get that gatekeeper rewind so I can get my tap in par. This hole did cause more trouble for some players today as it Average the fifth most difficult at a 3.96. Yeah, pretty hard to put yourself in position to get the birdie, but a lot of ways to put yourself out of position in a hurry. Yeah, and again, it could be some of that wind coming into play. Uh, 
you know, these fairways that we're playing down are a lot of those tunnels that we're talking about that you can catch. And uh, coming around that corner could be a different win, making people scramble early since the feature of this hole is early on. Mm -hmm. A right side splash out for Barella. And hole seven and eight more or less play opposite each other, so the likely tailwind on seven yields a headwind on the second shot on eight. And it looks like we're going to see a pack of fours. Some relief inducing, some stress inducing. Yeah, it's crazy how different the same score can feel on the same <laughs> hole. Uh, brings us into hole nine, 618 foot par four. Going to want to go where the drone is flying. If you can get across this road into this area here, that is going to be the easiest way to play the hole. Or it's the easiest way for your second shot. Uh, if you drift off to the left, it gets a little scrambly in there. But there's a few lines to hit. Eagle with the initial gap hit, but drifting off to the left. Maybe finding one of the auxiliary fairways. Very hard to land in a good spot from that left side. Here we go. Great shot there from Mason Ford. Going to be looking down that right side, which does have the more open options. And Barella pulling it right a little bit more early, but it has enough finish on it. Gets a skip off the road and around 200, 225 to the basket. And Simon with big distance off of the tee. Uh, we're going to get an opportunity to see every part of the second part of this fairway now because we have a player on the right side and a player in the middle and then Simon getting all the way over to the left. We'll see Mason here. Going to be able to just kind of throw the Stockheiser with a putter and catches the last tree. Still going to be in circle two. And Barella taking that stable Luna and Heiser. And very nicely done. Not the, not the direction I guess I expected him to go, but I can see why he chose that. It's almost like he was too close to access the right side gap without a, a weird skip angle. McMahon in scramble mode again, and that'll bring us to Simon. All right, so I guess I should try to get a little farther left side because that looked pretty wide open straight at it to me. Uh, whose arm are you using to get there? Yeah. <laughs> I guess not mine. And two holes in a row, Simon's approach earning him a gatekeeper rewind. And a way to connect for Mason there. Looked like he was... Probably 40 feet. Yeah, kind of getting it done a couple different ways. Uh, we saw on hole seven, the aggressive jump putt. This one just standing still to do it. And a bit of a slow start for him, but starting to connect a bit, getting himself to two under par through this front nine. He told me that he was a little uncertain about some of his disc choices early in the round because uh, he has to throw them kind of full power. But this middle of the course, uh, he can kind of do some more mids and fairways. And there you have it. That wraps up our front nine of round three out here at Champions Cup at Wildwood Park. Eagle McMahon leading the way on our card with four under par. A couple two unders and three under also. Yeah, still a lot of folks in the mix. Looks like Isaac Robinson and Niklas Antila out to hot starts on that lead card. Uh, we know we've got 
lot of talent left and a lot of golf left. So Nathan, I look forward to seeing it on this round three back nine coming soon from Gatekeeper Media. Uh, I do as well. I'll be happy to join you here again to call it. And for Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen. We'll see you guys out there.